Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Todd Blackman, your Central Drummer, and I have no clue how many times I've made this video and all that, but that's okay. So I have no clue what the perfect way to say uh, say this and all that, but I'm going to try my best to stick with the video and all that. I might be everywhere and all, but with this video, I'm pretty much trying to um, like kind of explain the difference between like a new and vintage symbol. What should you look for in uh, a symbol and all? So. All right, I'm going to pause it real quick. So the reason why I really made this uh, video or what inspired me to make this video was because of John Riley. I got to see John Riley over at Texas State University uh, because he was doing a master class. And uh, during one of his concerts, uh, we hanged out with him and he pretty much showed us one of his uh, vintage uh, symbols. Um, which was his hi-hat pair. His hi-hats he displayed or well, actually presented was from the 1940s. So that's really got me to research a little bit more about vintage symbols. It sounded amazing. Resume! Like, for the longest time, I've been, like, trying to replace, like, one of my symbols. Actually, two of my symbols. Actually, if it wouldn't be technical, three of my symbols, because the hi-hat has a pair and all that. So, I've been trying to replace my symbols for the longest time, and I've been making a, a little bit more income. And so uh, now I kind of like budgeted towards new symbols. So my budget was like around 300, uh, 300 or 400 dollars for symbols. And we all know how much pretty decent symbols cost nowadays for just one, uh, one pair. It could be between 400 and 500. So uh, I was thinking to myself, I have to think smart about this. Should I get a brand new symbol that might crack and all that? Or should I get something vintage and it might last me a while because I've done my research? A little bit now this is all towards taste like if you are signed by a symbol company and you need to do their new products then go ahead and all that uh, but if you're one of those people who's like you don't care about getting a sponsor you don't care about uh, whatever people think about you you really love what kind of sounds you want to get then go for a vintage sound and all that if that's or just your own symbols and all that but today is pretty much like new and vintage symbols so there's a difference between and this is more Pacific Pacific into Zildjian, but I'm pretty sure other companies like um, changed their process a little bit over the years. So Zildjian was a really great company um, throughout the time from beginning to now, and still is, it still is, and nothing wrong with their process now. It's just uh, it's a, a change of what the times and all that. So the story is uh, with this is that Zildjian they kind of changed their little process. I believe they had a fermenting process. And um, towards a certain point in their um, uh, career, uh, but also, well, just the, the company's uh, career and all that, they got so popular in demand that they had to change this little fermenting process where they, cut, they kept symbols in the vault for a certain amount of time. They aged it. Like, I think that someone that put, uh, it's a secret. I don't know how they aged the accelerated aging process, but they had this process and they get, decided to get rid of that because it was taking way too long for, for a symbol to be like in its file form. And so they tried to, they got rid of that. And then uh, now we have the Zildjian symbols to this day where it's not much of a fermenting process. So, so that's the reason why I was thinking about maybe I should just try to get some vintage symbols. I be, might be surprised what I might get because you, sometimes you might get some great treasure and all that. And uh, I'm, I'm here to show you some of my treasures uh, that I found. So my budget was like 300, but I found two of the best symbols out there. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are such musical symbols. These are some of the symbols that I'm kind of looking for or the best representation of my sound that I want. And also that way I can record and also perform and all that. So I got this fantastic ride symbol and all that and y'all could probably find this right symbol too if you look into uh, vintage shops or maybe reverb.com uh but uh be careful don't don't pay for like like if you want to uh, pay some of those things that you see that are like two thousand dollars and all that but i i wouldn't recommend that uh unless you have the budget for it then go ahead but i for a vintage symbol i would recommend try not to go over 300 and all that but for this one i got for 200 and all that it's a really cool one and all that. So this is a vintage symbol uh, from the 60s. And how do I know this? Well, most people, um, they kind of uh, do their research a little bit 
and all that. And um, someone uh, was uh, telling me, but also I did my research too, because I'm one of those people that wants to do more research on these things. And the secret of finding out is by the stamp and all that. So, uh, this is how you know what year it is it's made, the placement of the stamp and uh, what the stamp entails and all that. And uh, spacing of the letters. And it's really crazy how they identify this. And there's a website you could go to that uh, kind of like it is a database of like a timeline of Zildjian symbols of the stamps and also the ink. And I'm going to show you all that a little bit uh, too, which is really crazy. And also, but this right symbol is from the 60s. And super crazy that I have a right symbol that's from the 60s. And I'm going to play it uh, for you, what, see what it sounds like. And all that. But to me, like this is such a musical symbol. I really love the sound. It's such a big, massive upgrade from what I was before, which was... CBT. Yeah, I had that symbol for 10 years. 10 bloody years and all that. But it served me well and all that. And nothing wrong with it. I still have the symbol. It's right there, you know, in the corner and all that. And I still have that just in case if someone's like, you know what? I'm not caring for too much for this sound. Do you have another option? And I'm like, no, sure. Okay, sure. Uh, and I use that symbol. And they're like, oh, yeah, I love that sound. It's like, oh, cool. It's an entry level symbol and all that type of thing. So, but it's always good to have musical options and all that. And that's one thing that one of my teachers has taught me is to never limit yourself unless you have a purpose for it. But always uh, have musical options available to you. Like if you uh, have only one symbol, you're kind of limiting yourself sometimes unless your symbol is very versatile and all that. But it's always good to have an extra symbol uh, just in case as a musical option. And all. So with this, this is a really nice ride symbol I got for $200 and I actually, and you could probably do that too. Uh, try to find a music shop nearby, like uh, for me uh, in Houston, uh, it was in the Rock and Robin uh, music uh, guitar store and they had a big nice drum section. They actually have a, vintage, a really nice vintage selection of drums and also cymbals uh, too. Uh, they had like a Slingerland kit, so they had some of the, um, uh, I don't believe they had any Rogers, uh, but I saw like a uh, Leedy and Lidwick. If you don't know that, look it up, because uh, those were like one of the really, really first uh, drum companies to ever emerge and make uh, like these drum sets. And uh, later, uh, Leedy and Lidwick, it turned into Lidwick and all that. So this is a little bit of a, a big vintage crash course, a little bit about gear. So I got this ride symbol, it's really musical and all that type of thing. So now let me show you another thing I got. And actually you should have seen the before and after of this because I cleaned both of these symbols. Before they were, you know, like uh, when you see a vintage symbol or a very old symbol, they're very dark and green color. And all that. So this is what it kind of looked like uh, before and now as you now you see what it looks like now, which is really cool. So now let me show you my other thing, my hi-hats. So one of the things of uh, being like um, a musician is like thinking about um, just just making uh, the musical decisions and what kind of sound do you want and also thinking about um, uh, just being like technical type of thing. And all. So for me, my, my thing uh, for the hi-hats is that, um, and this is my honest opinion, is that I like holes in the bottom because I kind of feel like the symbol breathes more, but also when you uh, have your symbols like this, it doesn't create a pocket set of sounds and all that. So that's why we have that tilt. So that way we eliminate that pocket sound. But whenever you have these holes down here, it eliminates that. So I was thinking as like a smart musician and all that. but. It doesn't mean like I'm like a genius or anything. It just uh, means that I'm making musical decisions, uh, smart musical decisions. And so, uh, and that's just my opinion and all that. That's just my opinion. But these symbols right here, they're from the 70s. And uh, you want to know how I know that? Because of this uh, logo right here. It is not, it is like a white fill-in logo. And not, well, not even white, but it's like a hollow um um, it just has the outline of the ink of the letters, but not, not filled in like uh, some of the other things that Zildjian does. So that's the only uh, reason why I know this is from the 70s. And so when I bought it, it didn't even say it was from the 70s. But when it had this type of ink pattern and all that, that tells you that it's from the 70s. And I just love this, uh, these uh, pairs of hi-hats. And look, it has a flat bottom. And uh, these are just really, really 
really nice symbols. I love them. I shared them uh, with uh, a couple of Facebook groups. They're like, oh my gosh, musical gasms and all that. So yeah, they said that, not me. But uh, this is this. These are very versatile symbols, uh, in my opinion, because uh, these sound really great for funk. These sound really great for recording, uh, and uh, these sound really great for like any other uh, group uh, that you want to be in, like a rock group, a jazz group. And to me, like. I don't want to have like like maybe five different symbols uh, to choose from for like a recording session or uh, for maybe a gig and all that. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And so I want to try to see if there's any symbol that is very versatile where it's like if you hit the tip, it's like maybe that style or when you hit the edge, it produces produces different sound, but also placement of tips and all that. So this is a very versatile symbol. I really love this symbol. And I'm making smart musical decisions about this. But yeah, this is a 14 inch uh, Quick Beats hi hat from the 70s. And uh, I, I believe it's 14 inches. It could be 15. I don't, uh, let's say it's 14. Yeah, let's say it's 14. And all that. So let me play these uh, for you. And all that. They sound really, really nice. And all that. Uh, in context. And all that. So let's hop to the kit. sound like and all that and so you uh there's a little bit of a difference uh, between uh, what these uh, symbols uh, kind of sound like and all that so you notice that the hi-hat is a pretty much a fat thud uh type of sound and there are a couple times where i uh, played a tip there was a couple times i played the shoulders and hopefully those things made the cut and all that and uh it had a really interesting open hi-hat sound and all that and that's the, re the reason why because of that is because the top is pretty light but also the bottom is like very heavy it has a very uh, heavy sounds like if you listen to the very heavy sounds it's very tingy there's a little bit of an interval big major interval difference you know i want to say it's like around a third and all that um or maybe a major second at best uh, but there's a little bit of an interesting interval type of thing that's going on uh, with those hi-hats and all so they sound really great together and all that. It has a really nice uh, fat sound with the hi-hat. And I kind of feel like they kind of really blend in with other groups and all that. Like if it was a band setting, they really cut through uh, the group. It really blends in very well and all that. So with the right symbol, you heard a lot of the washiness. You heard a lot of the overtones. It's uh, very pingy. And so the stick is the key with this and all that. If you have a really nice uh, tip on the stick, then you can really hear that symbol very well. You can hear the wood of the stick and also the uh, washiness of the, the right symbol. And, all. and it's very, what I mean by very versatile is uh, whenever I hit it, it kind of sounds like a china. That's how powerful that symbol is because due to the 60s, uh, they wanted amplification. Um, well, they were accommodating to uh, the rise of amplification for like the guitars and the bass 
and all that. So that's when amplification was uh, starting to be uh, a major thing. And so uh, Zildjian accompanied that, and all with that, uh, uh, with the ride symbol back in the 60s, or the uh, A line of uh, Zildjian back in the day, and all. So, so these are really versatile symbols, and you kind of saw it a little bit. So whenever it was hitting the ride, it was pretty cool. Uh, nice uh, ting sounds. Uh, when I ever uh, hit, like, like kind of like did like a little bit of a rim shot on uh, uh, the ride symbol, it had a really nice bright or like it, it was powering, overpowering a little bit. To, uh, if you want to think of it that way, it was like very dominant type of uh, crash. And then when I hit the edge, it was a very, uh, uh, very nice full sound, very washy uh, type of thing. In a good way. I, when I say washy, it's a pretty uh, positive uh, manner and all that. So that's what I mean by washy. If I say it in a bad way, I'll say wishy washy and all that. If I say that, that's not a good thing. <laughs> And all that, but that's a little bit of the difference between like uh, the vintage and the new gear out there. Uh, and nothing wrong with the new gear. Uh, some people love uh, the sound of uh, fresh new cymbals and all that. Uh, but to me, like I really love stuff that sounds a little bit aged. It sounds like it's more defined and all that. And that's just from my musical perspective. And this was Zildjian back in like the 60s and the 70s, uh, both of these things. And they sound really, really nice. And I, I really love these symbols. They're really great investment. I only spent like four hundred dollars for all of that, uh, those symbols, and it was a really great bargain. I'm pretty sure y'all can too. And all that. It's like if you go on Reverb.com or if you uh, go to your local uh, music store and see if they have any gear that's from, uh, well, anything that's vintage, and all that. Usually, some of those uh, stores have them. Like I w if you're in Houston, Rocky Robin's a best place to go to and all that if you're a drummer but if you're a guitar player um, uh, that's a great place as well they have a lot of great stuff at a very affordable price very decent too unless it's a uh, it's something uh, signed by rush or something like that or signed by you know, person do you like it do you love it uh do you or is so so you know i, I don't know that's why we have a comment section, so we know what you think and all that about the video or some of the thoughts you have and all that. Concerns, indeed. So, yeah, that's pretty much uh, the, the video and all that. What are you still doing here and all that? If you're still hanging around, don't forget to uh, comment, like, subscribe and all that jazz. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.